All right, welcome back. Uh, this is Lag Demon Programming, and we're doing compiler design here in Ubuntu Linux. When we left off, we had uh, constructed a basic build environment, and we got uh, our compiler version of a Hello World program working, Hello Compiler Design, and that works. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is talk about some tools that you need Uh to actually construct a compiler. Before we bother designing a language, we need to understand how we're going to be compiling a language. So we're going to do some very simple operations, treating these uh, kinds of files one at a time. So uh, what are we going to do? The first thing that we're going to do here in our source directory is add a file, and I'm going to just going to call it lexer.l and here it is opened. Now, a lexer file, a lex file dot L is composed of three parts. And those three parts are separated by two I'm going to zoom in a few times here. There we go. These uh, sections are separated by these double percent signs. Okay. Up here in the top section is a place where we can uh, uh, provide certain options and we can also provide code that is copied verbatim to our output file. Uh, so what, let me talk about, first of all, what a lexer is, what a lexical analyzer is. So the lexical analyzer that we're going to build is going to read an input stream of characters and it's going to match those characters to some regular expressions that we're going to specify and whenever they match it's going to generate a token. Uh, in our case uh, the token is going to be very simple. It's going to print it on the screen because we're just going to work with the lexer. Uh, and I'm going to show you how all the various bits and pieces of this work. Uh, the way uh, we tell it to, to include source code in its output file is with this symbol set up here. It's percent brace and brace percent. And, and I don't know why this isn't uh, syntax highlighting. Did I not? Ins I thought I installed Lex in there, or Flex in here. I believe X Flex Snippets Flex Yak Bison. It's supposed to do. Oh well, the, those are just showing up white. Is all that's why. Okay. So what we want to do is uh, do an include, and we we're going to need IO stream. Uh, and yeah, to simplify it just to make it easier for type, we'll say using namespace standard. I know in another class I uh, advised against doing uh, using namespace standard because you're really importing the entire standard namespace uh, into, uh, into your program. Uh, but for us, it'll just simplify the typing a little bit. And then we need to declare an external uh, program called YY Lex. Oh, excuse me, YY Lex. And this is just boilerplate. Um, YY Lex is going to be uh, generated by our program. And then in here we can set options. Options always begin with a percent sign option. And we're going to say no YY wrap. Uh, and that's kind of important, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll understand what that means later. So we'll just put that down there. This section here is where we are going to apply our patterns. And down here uh, is where we could write some code. We could put our main function here, but we, we've got our main function in another file, which is fine. So, all right. So here is where uh, we want to start defining patterns to search for. So let me uh, 
take a look at some notes here. Also, up in this section here where we say uh, option uh, YY wrap, we can, we can define uh, some symbols that will simplify our regular expressions. But for now, we're not going to do that. We're just going to put some regular expressions right down here in the pattern match section. So this is kind of like the options section and definition sections. This is where we declare the patterns that we want to find. Now, how are those patterns laid out? Well, they are regular expressions. And what that means is uh, they follow a certain set of rules. Uh, they're a very precise way. Regular expressions are a precise way of defining a pattern of individual characters as they come in. So we're going to create a very simple pattern first. It's going to be one that looks at white space. In a regular expression pattern, anything that I put in uh, these square braces, what that means is that any of them in there, it's like a set of those things and it will match any character that I put in between there. So I want a space and a slant T and a slant excuse me N and what this is saying is match white space uh, white space being spaces tabs and new line characters and whenever it matches that I want to effectively do nothing I'm going to put a semicolon out here I'm going to describe what that what's going on out there at that semicolon level in a second uh, by the way it's important to note uh, I forgot about this any, any of these things that start with percent symbols and any of these pattern matches and other stuff here has to be all the way to the left hand side. There can't be any, uh, any spaces before that uh, first thing that you type. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is to find a number. Now, as we know, numbers can be floating point. They can have a decimal point in them or they can be just an integer. So the way the pattern matching works in this is the first one it encounters needs to be, let's call it the more complex one. Uh, because it, if it can match that, then it is going to match that fully. Uh, if it can't match, say, a floating point number with a dot in it, then it'll move down to the next possible match. And if that's an integer and there's no dot in it and it's numbers, then it'll match that next one. So it defaults downward uh, when it can't match. So you always want to have your more complex, uh, more full-featured patterns higher in the list and less feature-rich ones lower in the list. <clears throat> so let's define a number. So a number uh, can be a set of digits from 0 to 9. Now that dash between 0 and 9 creates a range. And it actually creates all of the characters from 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those ASCII characters will match. This says match one of those uh, in there. If I put a plus symbol after it, what that means in regular expression speak is match one or more of the characters 0 to 9. Now, the dot... Uh, period has a uh, or a full stop if you happen to be in the UK uh, has a special meaning in regular expressions a period or a full stop uh, means match any non white space character so we have to escape it because we want to actually match a period we don't want to match any character so if I put backslant dot that says match a period match a, uh, a decimal point and then immediately after that we put in another set of 0 to 9 that range plus and this is what we will call for our purposes now a very simple floating point number now it doesn't have all of the gizmos it it can't be positive or negative yet uh, and it can't have you know exponential exponentials on the end of it and all that that's okay this will match that pattern of a very simple floating point number. And then if we put a pair of braces out here, this is where we can type some code that will get executed when that pattern is matched. Okay, so when uh, the lexical analyzer sees that pattern and it matches it, it's going to 
combine that information into a, a variable called YY text, which is going to contain, contain the complete set of symbols that we matched here. And that's going to be accessible from within this code that we can write. And then we can do this. We can say C out um, uh, uh, floating, oops, floating point. We'll put a colon. And we can go YY text. That's the variable that that was in. And we'll put end out and semicolon. So if the lexical analyzer sees a number, it will print out that statement. Or not a number, but a floating point number. If it didn't match, if the incoming stream didn't match that, uh, it's going to match this next one probably, if it has numbers in it. 0 to 9 plus, it can match this. And we can say C out from integer. And I'll keep them lined up nicely. And then again, YY text, because that will have the characters of the complete match, and L, semicolon, and brace. And then if we want to find just any set of characters, numbers or characters, we could do a pattern like this. We could match from lowercase a to z, along with uppercase a to z, and 0 to 9 plus and uh, see out from uh, I don't know we'll call this maybe an identifier it's just a word or a word now we'll call it an identifier and I'll explain that uh, at some point so colon and again yy text and and L okay so far so good now we do have to, uh, we will have to tell our make system about some things here, but let's go back over to main.cpp. And in main.cpp, because we, uh, we're a separate compilation unit in main, it's a separate file, uh, we again need to go extern. Uh, let me double check that, it's over here extern int yylex. That's what we need. I'll just copy paste it. We need to have this in, uh, so we need to have that uh, extern there so that the linker will know, the compiler will know we're going to link that externally from the other files. Um, and we might need a, well, we won't need the actual header file. So we're going to say uh, starting Lexer, and what we will do is right below this we're going to put a simple statement in here we're going to say y while y y lex and uh, nothing more actually that's it while y y lex uh, y y lex will return a, a null when there's uh, nothing left to uh, to lex out of this uh, or a false. It's an integer, so it'll just return it a zero, which is false. <clears throat> okay. What do we have to do with CMake? So now this gets a little more tricky. We've got to put some things in here uh, for this CMake lists to work. So let's go back to our CMake lists. Which one is it? It's this one. Uh, so we're just calling it uh, main. Well, actually, we've got the name up. We call that main. In the subdirectory, uh, yeah, we called it main. So it doesn't matter. All right, cmakelist.txt. All right, so what do we need to do? Uh, we need to set some things. So uh, actually, I am just going to copy paste these in and then I'll explain them. Uh, hold on. Let me find the right one here.
All right, I need to pause the video for just a few minutes while I fix something. We're 15 minutes in. This won't take much longer, so. All right, I'm back. Um, I'm going to paste these in here. So what we're doing here is setting up the flex target. We're going to call it main scanner, uh, lexer.l, and uh, setting the uh, bison dependency. Actually, we flex bison dependency to main scanner. And then... We need to, when we do this executable down here, and I hope this works, it's been a while, but we need to add these dependencies in there. Uh, and I only need the flexor one, so, uh, or yeah, the one for flex. So we need to go dollar sign flex underscore main scanner underscore outputs. These are built-in variables. So by calling this main scanner as the target, CMake created this flex main scanner outputs, which is the output of our lex command that it's going to run on this. <clears throat> and we have to set up some include directories as well, right up here. I'll paste those in. So this tells it to include the directories. This is a variable created by CMake. It's the binary directory and the uh, current source directory will be include directories for this. So that should work. Uh, ls, uh, let's do cat dot dot slant source slant cmake files dot text. Everything's there. Let's do a cmake and make sure everything worked. Uh, sorry, cmake dot dot. Uh, CMake error, add flex dependency, macro invoked with incorrect argument for macro, add flex bison dependency. Flex target. I think I may have wanted this to be just add flex dependency. Uh, CMake dot dot. Unknown CMake command. So it is supposed to be flex bison dependency. Uh, I think we might have to create an actual bison file for this to work. So let's create a file. We'll call it parser.y here in our source directory. Um, it doesn't really have to have anything in it. We're not using it. I'll just do that so it's got its sections. Let's see, make list.txt. What else do I need here? Bison target. I'll put this in here and edit it. Hold on. Put this here, parser.cp, parser.y, parser.cpp. Then we need, this has to have main parser in it. And this has to be we also need bison. Bison main 
parser outputs. Ah, uh, we'll get this. Uh, we will get this set up. Uh, let me see if that works and what the problem might be. Uh, see, make dot dot. Ls make, and we're getting some errors. Source lexer dot cpp failed. Okay, I'm back. So the uh, the error was here. Uh, this uh, <laughs> percent needs to be on the same side uh, as this. It's percent open brace, percent close brace is the order uh, of that. So that should fix this error. Let's see what happens. We still get an error. Uh, EOF encounter inside in action. Uh, what did we do here? This is what we did here and here. Let's uh, try this again. It'll make uh, no input grammar, double free of corruption top. Okay, so very simply, uh, we got to toss together a little bit of a grammar file. I really only want to test the lexer, but my build system is making me do something here. Okay, so uh, in the parser file, uh, so I usually don't try to compile and just use the lexer. I usually set up the parser file and everything, <laughs> and I just, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I just made a quick mistake here. I needed to close off this. Don't worry about this uh, parser file right at the moment. We will, uh, we will get to that when, uh, when we start talking about the parser. Uh, for now, it just needs to be in place so that I can uh, so that I can build uh, so that I can build. Uh, so here's our, our CMake list text. It uh, goes to the source directory. The source directory has its own CMake list test. We kind of went over this. Uh, we can uh, we can put this back in, uh, and uh, with that, uh, hopefully it's saved. If we go here. Let's see. Uh, CD compiler design and CD build. Here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a make clean and then a make and uh, yy error. Now I got a bunch of errors. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I'm gonna take the Bison dependency out for the moment. I don't know why I did that. Make okay so it built and it linked and now what we can do is uh, we can expand this just a little bit so you can see it better make it big and uh, we'll type in uh, source slant main and it says starting lexer so if we type in one two three it says integer and we type in one two three point five <clears throat> it says it found a float <clears throat> If we type in some identifier, it says it found an identifier. So that's uh, that's the lexer part working. And all we really have done here is uh, just create these very simple patterns. This is compiled by Flex and turned into source code. In fact, uh, that is uh, here in lexer.cpp. Uh, this is the uh, uh, CPP file that it generated. Flex read that pattern matching uh, program and generated this, as well as uh, uh, did it should have uh, oh and there's parser.h yeah and parser.cpp and uh, lexer.cpp this is all of the code that it generated so that just that few lines of code generated all of this and what this is is it's a it's a uh, lexical analyzer it generated it took our uh, input file lexer.l this little bit of stuff and it generated the code necessary to provide a lexical analyzer for this construct so 
All right, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to get notifications, hit that notify button. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.